Hello, my name is Father Tim Peskett and I'm the new vicar of St John the Divine West Worthing and priest in charge of St Andrew the Apostle Worthing. I moved to Worthing from Chichester about four weeks ago at the height of lockdown, uh, which made the whole moving experience interesting to say the least. However, by the grace of God, um, we set the settling into the new parish very well indeed. And two weeks ago, it was a joy for the two parishes here in Worthing to receive our new assistant curates. Um, still yet to be ordained in October, hopefully, and but he's fresh from St Stephen's House in Oxford, and his name is Josh Delia. Thank you, Father. So as you say, I'm I'm originally from London, uh, and I've just finished three years of training at St Stephen's House, and um, and similarly at the height of lockdown, uh, I've moved into Worthing two weeks ago with my wife and two small children, um, and even though I'm not yet ordained. We're enjoying uh, getting used to life in the two parishes, getting to know people um, and, you know, just excited to see what God's going to do next. Um, and even though these are uh, uncertain times, um, at the same time, it, it, I think it's been a really important opportunity uh, to, to see things with fresh eyes. Um, for example, I was struck very much um, with the, uh, during the experience of being locked into my own home. Uh, what it must be like uh, to be a person for whom that's a lived reality and so hopefully that will uh, inform the way in which I, I minister the, to them in the future. Thanks Josh. As you say lockdown has been a difficult time uh, for us all um, but I've certainly learned new skills uh, during this period, um, computer skills, all manner of skills, um, and new ways of communicating the faith through um, Zoom and uh, through streaming services. So could you just tell us a little bit more about how you've been preparing yourself for this new transition uh, to parish life um, in Worthing? Thanks. Uh, well, I'm sure I'm not the uh, only ordinand in the Church of England um, to whom people have been apologising, saying we're so sorry that you don't get to get the usual experience of what it's like to finish at college and to start in parish. Um, but in many ways, you know, lockdown for me has been a kind of forced, um, forced retreat. You know, it's very easy to get lost in busyness and, and doing things. Um, but when you're locked in your own home, um, really the most effective thing that you can do is, is, is prayer and to spend time uh, reflecting on who you are as a person, um, you know, where God is in your life, and, and to remember the importance of those that you, that you love and hold dear. Um, I mean, practically speaking, uh, the, the importance of how much we need one another and how we're cr created to live in community and how important that is in parish life was brought home in my last uh, few months at college where we had to make sure that those, particularly those who were locked in by themselves, um, knew that they weren't alone um, and doing things like offering to uh, pick up shopping for neighbours. Um, so even though we haven't had the standard experience in many ways, uh, I'm, I'm sure that God has been using it as a time to show us um, some of what lies at the heart of parish ministry. Thank you, Josh. So, Thinking about uh, the future, the old normality is probably not going to be the new normality. And this provokes in me a few thoughts. Uh, for example, how many people are going to return to church um, who may be out of the regular uh, habit of community worship? Or how many people who are on the periphery of church life will come back to it in the short term? So what are your hopes and concerns uh, for the next 12 months of ministry here in Worthing, Josh? Well, Father, as you say, I think the biggest challenge which, which the church will face over the next 12 months is that we just can't predict what, what life is going to look like over those 12 months and, and, and you know, what it will mean in terms of, of church life. Um, 
you know, it's hard to prepare for what you're not sure of. Uh, but my hopes for the next 12 months, um, without wanting to sound too uh, idealistic, I think it's an opportunity to learn to trust uh, in Jesus's words, where he tells us that, that the gates of hell will not overcome and, and that he will remain with us till the end of the ages. Uh, and so, you know, no matter what uncertainty is, I think it's an opportunity to, um, to learn to rely on the constancy of Christ. I'm so pleased to hear you say that, Josh, and it's so true. After 30 years of experience uh, in ministry, um, I'm convinced, too, that uh, Jesus' words in the gospel, um, the gates of hell will not prevail against uh, the church, uh, are so true. And we need to renew our trust in his words. And as we emerge from lockdown, um, we're beginning to open up our churches and um, begin the Sunday celebrations and weekday celebrations of uh, the Mass. Um, and people are gradually beginning to return. And there's a hunger, I think, for um, church and uh, for um, looking to the future with hope and um, and trust. So Josh, what single thing gives you hope for the future of Christianity in this country? Well, I think it was actually being able to attend uh, the first public act of worship at St John the Divine since lockdown. Um, you know, we weren't sure about how many would turn up, but, but people did turn up and in good number. And it was when we got to the point of, of receiving communion that what could have been a, a somber and bizarre moment people were just full of joy they couldn't wait to get up to the altar steps uh, to to you know to receive uh, the lord in communion and for me this just shows that that people are still hungry for god uh, even after three months of lockdown um, and i think that that we can be excited uh, to see what god has in store for us thanks josh as you say, these have been difficult times, uh, but also exciting times to come. Um, and I think we would value the prayers of the, the diocese uh, that we may be given strength to share the faith uh, in these post-lockdown days. Yes, and, and thinking about things I'd ask people to pray for me for, um, I, I think it's really just patience. Um, you know, uh, these times might be a surprise to us, but they're not a surprise to God. And 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 I have to trust that, that God's put me here as a lay worker for, for three months um, to work out his purposes. And so I would just ask for prayer um, that, that I make the most of that time as a lay worker here. And and just uh, as I'm preparing and looking ahead to to my ordination as deacon in October. Thanks, Josh. We certainly will pray for you as you prepare for ordination and all those preparing for ordination at this time.